So I just wanted to say that I freaking love photography so much. There's nothing better than snapping an image that you just come home with and you have forever. You can edit it to how you want it to be, possibly print it. It's just an everlasting memory of whatever you captured in your perspective, how you want it done. Just the whole process, I'm just, I freaking love it. This sounds cheesy, but I honestly feel that way from this photo that I captured recently on my trip with Taylor Brown in Virginia. And I wanted to break down how I shot that photo in this video, everything from the gear used, my approach, the steps that I take to pretty much create this image that I'm honestly so proud of. So let's get into it right now. And a big thanks to Zyro for sponsoring this video and this trip. They made the whole thing possible to get these images and the previous video, which if you didn't see that, I'll link it up here. So go check that out too. More on that later. So in this video, I wanted to break down how this photo was shot. Essentially, how to tell a story in a photo, because it's honestly pretty hard. A photo is just a still image. It's not a video clip where you can at least have interaction or whatever. So how do you tell a story with, you know, a photo. And I think this photo honestly captures that. And there's basically three tips that I take to come up with something like this. So let's get into them right now. First, let's briefly touch on the gear because I mentioned some of this in the previous video. This photo was shot with the Canon R6 using a 16 to 35 lens. Specifically this one, this is my 16 to 35 F4 IS lens. This is an awesome lens. I've had it for years now. I use it for real estate, landscape work, anything wide. This is what I'm using. But more specifically for this scene, there's other gear that's more important. For example, a variable ND filter. So a variable ND filter is essentially sunglasses for your lens. It's the best way you can kind of think about it. When you put this in front of your lens, you're gonna completely darken the image like you saw right there. So even though I'm not changing any camera settings, if I put this on, it darkens the image. So you're wondering, what's the point of that? How would that help me? Well, essentially now you could use more creative control. You can basically black out as much as you can, slow your shutter down so you can get really cool, almost long exposure photos, even though it's daytime. So it wouldn't be possible unless you had a variable ND filter. So this is definitely a must, especially for this image. The second most important piece of gear for this was a tripod because this photo was a 10 second exposure. So what that means is the shutter was open for 10 seconds thanks to a variable ND filter to darken the image, making that exposure longer and a tripod for a steady shot. Anytime that there's water in the shot, I wanna do a long exposure shot because the more movement you have in the shot, the more dreamy and water-like it's gonna be. Kinda like in this image here, I know you can't see full details on it, but the water is really dreamy and it just, it looks so good. It just looks, it's my favorite thing ever. And so let me show you how you would set up a long exposure shot. You basically wanna get your shutter super slow to at least probably a second. This is hard to do, like right there. So anywhere from one second to 10 seconds is gonna really give you that dreamy landscape look if anything is moving, especially water. So you can just keep cranking your shutter down. So you can play around in that scene from anywhere from one second to 10 seconds and that's really where that ND filter comes into play because once you get up to those really high exposures and it's a, unless it's like nighttime, it's gonna be way too bright. So. In this case, where it was still kind of like sunset time, that image would have been so overexposed at a 10 second shutter, unless I had that ND filter. And here's another pro tip, whenever you're doing long exposure shots to avoid any camera shake whenever you press the shutter button, you wanna use the two second delay. That way when you press the shutter, it's not gonna you know, accidentally shake the camera. And if you use the two second delay, by the time it's taking the photo, there won't be any shake. And that's another tip that I do honestly for all my real estate photos as well. So would this photo have been possible without a tripod? Yeah, but you wouldn't have gotten that super dreamy, smooth water that you see in it. It just wouldn't have been possible to hand hold something for even with, even with IBIS for more than like half a second, which is still pretty awesome that you can do that. But if you really want a true long exposure, dreamy landscape shot, 
you'll need a tripod. So I definitely recommend this one. This is what I use for traveling, my real estate work. This is the Manfrotto Be Free Advanced, I believe, and it's really light. Just slip it in the backpack, good to go. So now we've basically built this photo with the gear, the spot, everything. But what's left? There's one very important piece, the most important part of it of all that kind of takes this photo from just a landscape shot to being able to tell a story with it. And that's adding a subject. Essentially, most landscape photography is just, you know, a unique perspective of that landscape. But I think what takes these photos to the next level is adding some sort of subject. And it doesn't have to be a person. It can be a object, like in this case, it's the canoe that interacts with this scene. Funny enough, how this came to be is they, you know, I didn't put the canoe there. It, I came across it as we were leaving and it's funny, I didn't plan this photo at all and it just happened to work out perfectly. There was a couple next to us who were just canoeing on this lake and I got another shot of them, which I'll show it right here. And this one's pretty cool too, but this one, that how it's kind of rested on the side of the lake with it being dark and just the water being dreamy, it just tells a story to me, it just kind of like, I don't even know how to put it into words, but it just evokes a feeling an emotion. And that's, that's all I want my photography to ever be able to do. Like if you can feel something from looking at it, then I did a good job. So I framed up the photo, put it on the lower third, did a 10 second exposure, and I just love the result. So that's another way that you can honestly tell a story, add more to your photos, is instead of just having this awesome landscape, which is a great photo itself, like this one, this is just the landscape, but adding in a subject that can just interact with your environment, with that landscape, or possibly add emotion to it, it can just emulate some feeling that wouldn't be possible if you didn't have that subject in there, is always gonna make it a better image. And I'm honestly always looking for that because I just want photography, at least my photography, to evoke some emotion. You know, that's why, I think why I honestly got into wedding photography because that's like all that is about is, you know, you want those photos to be emotional for the couple. But being able to do that with other types of photography is such a challenge, but so rewarding. And here's another pro tip, if you're, you know, out by yourself and you have a really cool landscape shot, but maybe it just needs something else, you could put your camera on a 10 second timer and then you can just go stand in the scene. And I bet it's gonna be a pretty cool result. Try different poses, you know, just looking off into the distance or something and you'll probably be really satisfied with that photo. And that's honestly my approach to any landscape photo and any scene that I'm in, you know, if you go watch the first video, the tips that I shared in that one, plus these tips, you'll honestly come back with some really awesome photos. But you know what's more important than just having these awesome photos to yourself is sharing them with others, like a website. Which brings me to today's video sponsor, Zyro. Zyro made this whole trip possible. I built my personal website through them in a matter of minutes, and so can you. Zyro is one of the easiest ways to build a website or create an online store. With simple drag and drop editing and hundreds of designer made templates, you can build a website literally in minutes. One of the cool things about the website host Zyro is it's so easy to learn. There's no learning curve whatsoever. The day I started making my website is the day I finished it. I really wanted a minimal, clean, sleek design, found a template I liked, tweaked it a little bit, added the content, and I was good to go. Some of the most important things for me from a website host are affordability, ease of use, fast website loading speed, and 24 seven live chat support. Fast loading speeds are so important. I can't stress that enough. I remember when I first built my website from, I don't even know who was hosting it, but the website took so long to load. And that's a big deterrent for your clients because if they're having to sit there and they have great service, but your website is just taking forever to load all the media, the pages, whatever, they might click off of it. So one of the things that Zyro is really awesome with is fast loading speeds. Super important for e-commerce or any type of website. So grab Zyro's limited time deal or use my code for an exclusive discount plus three months free and a free domain for a year with any yearly plan. Thanks so much to Zyro for sponsoring this video and making this trip possible. Super thankful for you guys. So I honestly think one of my biggest takeaways from this trip is to just having a plan. If you plan things in advance, you're gonna get such better results. Kind of like this photo, the videos that I made, the content that I got. If you just plan things in advance and you know what you're looking for, you have a strategy, you're always gonna come up with better content, better photos versus just going in blindly and just winging it. Sometimes that works, like funny enough, this photo was not planned until I saw it, but having these steps in my head of having the right gear, looking for the right composition, the type of photo I wanted, 
And then finally finding that subject that I needed to just take that landscape shot to the next level really made the big difference. So that's pretty much it guys. Let me know your thoughts below if this could possibly become a little mini series on this channel, you know, breaking down a photo or a video clip and how it was shot, what went into it. I think that'd be a pretty cool topic, but leave a like if you enjoyed, comment down your thoughts, subscribe if you haven't already. I would love for you guys to be part of the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.